everybody, and welcome to the Children's Bible Study for this week. I've changed the name from Sunday School to Bible Study. That's more fun, isn't it? Welcome to the Children's Bible Study. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to get started today with our first song, which is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. The link is in the video description below. You guys click on that link, sing that song, and I'll be right back. Take care. All right, wasn't that a wonderful song? I love that. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Thank you for being back with us. As we get going, I'm going to open us in prayer in just a minute, but we're going to learn a great story from the book of 1 Peter today of how Peter talked to and helped the Christians who are really struggling uh, in the hard and difficult times it was like to be a follower of Jesus just after Jesus ascended into heaven. I'm going to talk about how sometimes it's hard to be a follower of Jesus and some great lessons that Peter tells you and Peter tells me as we follow him. Just as a reminder to you, this is the Gospel Project. Great gospel lesson. God loves you. You He created you to live in relationship with him. We've sinned. We broke his laws. We fell short of his glory. But God didn't give up on us. He sent Jesus to give his life for us, and he died, he rose again, and we get to have faith in him, and when we trust him, we get to have eternal life and walk with him through faith in him. And so what a wonderful, wonderful story that is. Let me pray for us, and then we'll do our activity sheet. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for helping us learn more about you and how to walk with you in hard times. We pray that you'll be with us as we study your word together. For it's in Jesus we pray, amen. All right, guys, activity sheet coming your way. You take time to do that. Pause the video and do it on your screen or do it on the paper you received, or you can pull it up on the link that is in the video description below, and we'll be back. back. Take care. Well, now that we've done the activity sheet, we're ready to study the Bible and talk about how great our God is and help in hard times. And so today's story is a story of how the Apostle Peter, there's a picture of him, the Apostle Peter wrote a letter. He wrote a letter to a group of Christians that were having a really hard time following Jesus. But before we get started uh, doing in the Bible study, I want to ask you to do something, uh, play a little game with me. And it's going to be a game with you to determine what's easy and what's hard. What's easy and what's hard. So when I say something, if you think it's easy, I want you to touch your toes. Reach down and touch your toes. If you think it's hard, hold your hands up high. Okay, raise your hands up in the air. So here's a few things. I'm going to ask you some questions, and you determine, and you play along with me. Number one, what do you think about putting toys away? Is it easy or hard? Remember, easy, touch your toes. Hard, raise your hand. Easy or hard, putting toys away. What about sharing with other people, especially our brothers and sisters? Ooh, that's a tough one, isn't it? What about playing a musical instrument, maybe a guitar? Do you think that's easy or hard? What about eating ice cream? Is that easy or is that hard? I'm going to go with easy. I'd be touching my toes right now. What about flying an airplane? Mm, that might be tough. What about catch a lizard? You know, little green lizards, they're fun to catch in the summertime. What about catching a lizard? Is that easy or is that hard? How about throwing a ball? Remember, toes easy, hands up if it's hard. What do you think about throwing a ball? Here's one. What about sitting very still and being very quiet? What do you think about that? Easy or hard? What about watching a movie with your family? Easy or hard? Eating popcorn while you're watching the movie. What about taking turns with our friends at school or friends at church or with our brothers and sisters? What about taking turns? Hard or easy? And then the last one, climbing a tree. And I know some of you are watching this, climb a tree. And Catherine, I saw you climb a tree this week. How hard is it to climb a tree? Is that easy or it, is it hard? Probably depends on how hard, how big the tree is and what kind of tree it is. Easy or hard? Now, you answered those questions. Some things in life are really easy and some things are really hard. And for the people who received Peter's letter, being a Christian was really, really hard. Sometimes it's hard to be a Christian. You know, for many of us, being a Christian is easy and fun. It's great. Our moms and our dads and our grandparents and our aunts and uncles, many of us are Christians, and we get to pray at the, the 
dinner table or at lunchtime before we eat. Maybe we're watching this video and we're having a good time doing that. We get to go to church and we get to enjoy our friendships and our fellowships there. We get to learn about Jesus. We have a lot of fun. It's just who we are. But for some people in the world, it's really, really hard because there's all kind of pressure. Pressure. Everybody take your hands and pull them together. Squeeze as tight as you can. That pressure, pressure between your hands. Squeezing as tight as you can. That's pressure. A lot of pressure on them for being Christians. And that was the case the people to whom Peter wrote his letter. First Peter and Second Peter. He wrote two letters, but the one we're going to talk about today is First Peter. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time reading through First Peter 1 and 2. Uh, I'm going to just point out a few things to us that Peter tells his readers and tells you and me that when life gets hard, God is there to help us through it, especially when it comes to living like a Christian and being a Christian in our world today. So this is the first thing Peter says, and I'm going to put the first one on the screen. The first thing Peter says to this group of people is Jesus loves you and died for you, and he rose again from the dead. Peter reminds them of just how much God loves them in Jesus and what he has done. He has come to this earth. He's walked as you and I walked on this earth. He died for us and took our place on the cross, and then he rose again from the dead. He conquered dead, the death. We call that the gospel. That's the great story of Jesus. And Peter wants to remind these Christians of that. Listen, just put your listening ears on. I'm not going to put it on your screen. Just put your listening ears on as I read this. Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, he says. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then he talks about how we get to live an eternal life through Jesus. So Jesus loves you enough to come and take upon flesh and die for you and then rose from the dead and you get to spend an eternity with him if you trust him. And Peter wants to remind us of that because it doesn't matter how hard it is to be a Christian, no one could ever take away the fact that Jesus loves us that much. Jesus is always there for us. And so I want you guys to remember that. The second thing that Peter tells his readers today is, then tells us, is that Jesus shows us how to live. Not only did Jesus come and die for us, Jesus shows us how to live. There it is on your screen. He shows us how to live our lives. He says in 1 Peter chapter 1 on Father, he says in verse 13, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, be sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ returns. As obedient children, do not be conformed to this world, but rather live to Jesus. We are to do what Jesus did. He shows us how we are to live in relationship with God. You see, that's Jesus came not only to give his life for us, to make it possible for us to live a relationship with God. He came to show us how to live a relationship with God, how to live in relationship with God, what God wants us to do with our lives, how God wants us to live our lives. So he came, he died, he rose again. He shows us how we live our lives. And the third thing Peter wants these Christians who are dealing with really difficult times, the third thing he wants them to know is that Jesus gives us power to live like him. Jesus gives us power to live like him. And we know that there are basically two things that Jesus gives us the power to do through his spirit. Number one, to love God. We are called, we are here to love God. We are to love God with every part of our being. With my mind, point to your head. With my mind, with my heart, point to your heart. With my soul, point to the middle of your belly. Kind of the middle of your belly because the soul is part of who you are. With my mind, with my heart, with my soul, and my strength. Put your arms up like that. My strength. I'm to love God with everything that I have. You are too. Jesus showed us how to do that. For Jesus loved God with everything he had. And he gives us the power to do that. And then we are to love other people. Say that with me. Love other people. Three words, three simple words. Love other people. But so important. We love God and we love other people. And Peter here is talking about how we love each other and help each other out when we face hard times. See, the Christians that Peter was writing to were going through something we call persecution. That's a big word. Say, say it with me. Persecution. 
And persecution is simply this. They had friends and family members who made fun of them because they trusted Jesus. They had friends and family members that didn't want to be their friends or their family anymore because they trusted in Jesus, because they walked with Jesus, because they were part of the church. The government, the police were coming after them and arresting them, and they had to hide because they were believing in Jesus. Now, we don't have to suffer that, and we pray we never will. We're so thankful. Our police are good people. We want to support our police and love them, and they got our best interests at heart. But the people to whom Peter was writing this, they were having a really hard time. But there are going to be times in our lives where people in our families and people in our, and, and our friends may make fun of us because we believe in Jesus or because we don't do certain things because we want to live like Jesus. And here's what I want you to do. Maybe that's not something you've experienced, but your mom and dad have and your aunts and uncle have and your grandparents have. And so I want you to ask them as a family some things I want you to do. One, I want you to ask your family and have a conversation. Ask your mom and dad. Ask your grandparents. Hey, tell me a time when it was hard to be a Christian. When it was hard to follow Jesus, and how did how did you do it? How did you overcome? How did you uh, how were you able to, to to remember that Jesus loved you and died for you and rose again for you and live like Jesus wants you to live? How did that happen? And then I want you also to talk to your moms and dads, aunts and uncles, about what makes life with Jesus so good. How great is life with Jesus? Ask them, say, hey, why is being a Christian so important to you? What makes your life so good? And you guys talk about that. So ask them about a time it was really hard and ask them about what makes their life really good with Jesus and how Jesus gets them through the hard time. So I want you to have that conversation with your mom and dad about and think about Jesus loves you. The three things we talked about, Jesus loves you, Jesus died for you, Jesus shows you how to live and Jesus gives you the power to live and how you can do that. And then the last thing I want you to do today is I want you to write a letter to somebody. Peter wrote a letter. Write a letter to somebody and tell them you love them. To encourage them, build them up just like Peter did and remind them of how great Jesus' love for them is. You can send a letter to your mom, your grandpa, your, your, your grandparents, or aunts and uncles, or family friends, somebody that lives off, and then get parents, somebody to help you mail it. And if you can't write yet, you can draw them a picture. Draw them a great picture to show them just how much you love them and how much God loves them, because we're trying to live like Jesus. With that said, hey guys, I hope you have a great day. Remember to pray for Chris and Catherine Davidson planning that church in the American Church. We've been praying for them, and we're going to continue to do that. And here's the coloring sheet, and so you guys can print that off, or you can color it if you got it. And then lastly, our final song of the day will be uh, the song that uh, comes up later, and I forget the name of it. I for, forgot to write it down, so I forget the name of it, but it'll the link will be in the video description below, just like the first one was. You guys can sing along with that. Let me pray for us and we're done. Father, we thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for so much for reminding us how much you love us, showing us how to live and give us the power to do it. We pray that you will help us to walk with you and be your faithful Christians from now to the end of eternity. For it's in Jesus we pray. Amen. You guys have a great day. God bless you. Sing the song. Love you. See you next time.